Welcome back to the study of the Book of Romans. I'm Ann White, and in our lesson today, we're going to be talking about chapter 16 in this wonderful letter to the Church of Rome. In our last section, we talked all about living out our life in Christ as Christian brothers and sisters. Paul has given us so much encouragement and so many things to think about in this letter. But before we get into today's study and our last chapter in this wonderful book, let us go to the Lord in prayer and invite him into our time together. Lord, thank you for your word and for your presence. Father, thank you for the many accounts and encouragement from brothers and sisters who have walked this journey of life before we did. Father, that through your word, we can learn about them and we can be encouraged by them and challenged by them to walk out our faith in very practical and powerful ways, Lord. Thank you for the Apostle Paul and for all that he did to bring so much encouragement to so many people, not only during his time, but throughout all of the time that his words were written down and shared with churches and with men and women. And now in our printed Bibles, Father, we have the word with us every single day, and we are so very grateful. So God, just help us to open our hearts and minds to you and to your word and to what you would have us to take away today. Let us be encouraged and inspired and energized to do the things that you're calling us to do. Lord, we love you and we praise you and we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, let's dive in. As I said in our last chapter, we were talking about building one another up in the body of Christ. We were talking about putting others first, not letting those small little details or differences between one another come between us. We also talked about Paul's church planting passion. That should be a passion of ours as well. And then Paul also spoke on who is it that enables us to do anything that we're called to do? It's God. We don't have to be fully equipped. We don't have to have that power and strength because through God and through our Holy Spirit, we are enabled to do the things that he is calling us to do. So now let's dive into today. We're in our last chapter. And this is a wonderful chapter. When we first look at this chapter, you may think we're not going to get a whole lot out of this because there's just a list of names here before Paul goes into his closing remarks. But there's more than a list of names, and that's where we're going to start in these first verses, 1 through 16. Paul is talking about his friendship, the community in Christ. That's our title for today. We need to be in community, that community in Christ, community of believers that help support us, encourage us, and we need to give thanks for them, just as the Apostle Paul did here. Now, let's look at some of the people that he honors as he goes through this letter. He says in verse 1, I commend to you our sister Phoebe, who is a deacon in the church. Welcome her in the Lord as one who is worthy of honor among God's people. Help her in whatever she needs, for she has been helpful to many, especially to me. Paul starts out by welcoming Phoebe, a woman in the faith, someone who's a deacon, someone who is worthy of honor. And he asks this church in Rome to be sure and help her, to welcome her. We believe, and theologians believe, that Phoebe was the one who delivered Paul's letter to the church in Rome. So he wants her to be honored and helped in many ways because she's very helpful. Then he goes on and says in the next verse, Give my greetings to Priscilla and Aquila. They're my co-workers in ministry, and they once even risked their lives to save me, Paul says. He says, I'm thankful for them, and so are all the Gentile churches. And also give my greetings to the church that meets in their home. So Priscilla and Aquila, we learn about them in the book of Acts, but Paul honors them. They opened their home not only to him, but to a local body of believers to hold church in their home. Anytime you see Priscilla and Aquila, they're always mentioned together. This is a husband and wife team that is a wonderful model of serving the Lord together. So they're an encouragement to Paul, and he mentions them quite often. Then he goes on down in the next verses talking about other believers, and some of the names are difficult, so I'm not even going to attempt them. 
But as you read these verses, you're going to see how Paul honors these people because not only are they believers, they're helpers, co-workers, men and women. In fact, chapter 16 has the most extensive list of female partners in the gospel and in leadership and ministry in all of the letters that Paul wrote. He honors many women and he mentions them by name and how they were his co-workers and are deserving of honor and praise. So we need to be thankful for all of the men and women who serve the Lord and help us and partner with us. We're not called to walk this journey alone. We're called to walk it with fellow believers. Men and women who can come alongside us, share the gospel, encourage us, empower one another, lift one another up, and help us when we're struggling with any type of discouragement. So Christian community is very important. It's very important to Paul, and it's very important to you and I. Now, Paul's going to continue to move into the close of his letter. And as he goes into these final verses, 17 through 27, he's going to talk about staying focused on the gospel and not being led astray. So let's read verse 17 together. And now I make one more appeal, my brothers and sisters. Watch out for people who cause divisions and upset people's faith by teaching things that are contrary to what you have been taught. Stay away from them, Paul says. You need to distance yourself from any false teaching. The Holy Spirit will let you know when you hear things that are not truth. And when you're in God's word, make God's word the plumb line of your life. Make it the plumb line of truth and non-truth. Because if it's not supported by scripture, then it's not true and you need to back away. John 16, 13 says, when the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all truth. This was Jesus's instructions, his final instructions, just before he went to the cross. He was speaking to his disciples and telling them that the Holy Spirit is going to come. I'm going to send the Spirit of God to be with you when I'm no longer with you physically in person. And that Spirit is going to help you discern the truth. So you need to rely on your Holy Spirit and you need to rely on the Word of God. I want to read you another passage in Colossians 2 8. Don't let anyone capture you with empty philosophies and high sounding nonsense that come from human thinking and from the spiritual powers of this world rather than from Christ. In other words, we need to be able to discern truth and rely on the truth and stay with the truth. Replace those worldly lies with the scriptural truth. Paul is saying this in his closing remarks. He's saying, let's be a community together. Let's unite. Let's encourage and support one another. Let's stay focused on the truth and let's not be led astray by false teaching. As Paul continues to close in these final verses, there are several others that are listed that are Paul's co-workers and even his scribe is listed here. But I want to get down to verse 25 where Paul says, Now all glory to God who is able to make you strong just as my good news says. And then in verse 27 he says, All glory to the one wise God through Jesus Christ forever. Amen. Who is the one who can make us strong? Who is the one who can set our path right? That is our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And if you don't know him today, I pray that you will get to know him. And if you've missed any of our earlier lessons, stay tuned because we're going to be doing a review of the entire book of Romans in our next session together. But also, I would love for you to go back and Go chapter by chapter through this wonderful letter to the Church of Rome with me. As we've learned so much, we've been challenged so much together. And let's you and I walk hand in hand as a community of believers, not focused on our differences, but let's stay focused on what really matters to the kingdom of God. God bless you, and I will see you again as we close this book and this letter to the Church of Rome. Courage for Life was founded in 2014 by Ann White on the belief that God's Word changes lives. From printed resources to video-driven Bible studies, gospel videos, and online discipleship programs, Courage for Life 
is dedicated to addressing the connection between emotional health and spiritual growth. Our discipleship resources and programs can help you identify and overcome the obstacles that keep you from living the abundant life God intended for you. The Courage for Life All-Female Voiced Audio Bible is a powerful resource that brings comfort, encouragement, inspiration, and hope to all who listen. So be sure to download it today on your Apple or Android device and discover all the resources and tools created by our team at Courage for Life and let the transformative power of Scripture touch your life and lead you toward a deeper relationship with God and others. Follow us on Facebook and Instagram at God Gives Courage or visit our website at courageforlife.org to learn more and get involved.